Our guest today is the General Superintendent of the Chicago Park District. He was appointed by Mayor Rahm Emanuel 20 months ago. Prior to being appointed General Superintendent, our guest today served as the Chief Operating Officer of the Chicago Park District. His leadership has been superb in providing programs for adults and children with special needs. Our guest today earned his law degree from DePaul and his undergraduate degree at John Carroll. He and his wife, Molly. Now, Molly, where are you? Well, here we go. Let's give her a round of applause because we know who does all the work that Mike takes the credit for. His wife, Molly, and their family are the proud parents of four beautiful children. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Kelly. Michael? Thanks, Jay. How you doing, Patrick? You ready? Okay. <laughs> so good afternoon. Uh, it's great to see everybody again. Uh, this is my second appearance back at City Club, and uh, I got to be honest with you. If I'm going to speak and I'm going to take this much time, I'm going to be fired up. So I want everybody to be fired up. Father Ryan fired me up. The trumpet fired me up. So <laughs> hopefully, I can carry a little of that uh, enthusiasm over in this uh, speech. Probably be about 30 minutes today. Um, <laughs> But I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, a lot of you know me. I got the best job in the world. I really do. I'm passionate about it. I love the parks. I know a lot of you love the parks. Um, and it, again, it's great to see my friends. It's great to see my family. My mom and dad, Jim and Kathy Kelly are here. <laughs> my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, uh, Frank and Kathy Maloney. And one last time, my wife, Molly. Yeah. <laughs> if I could ask for a minute all the Park District employees to please stand for a minute. And uh, <laughs> these are hardworking, hard dedicated public servants. And um, if I can't ask a qu answer a question today, one of them probably can. Feel free at the table, feel free to tap them on the shoulder. Uh, they know their stuff and they can help you along. Um, last, uh, Dr. Traubert, I don't think has made it yet, but I, I do want to uh, recognize not only uh, Dr. Traubert, who's the president of the Board of Commissioners, but I do want to recognize Commissioner Laird Koldike, who's with us today. <laughs> It's worth mentioning because they're volunteers. They serve unselfishly, and I, it's, 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 it's really something inspiring. I said it last year, I'm gonna say it again, it's inspiring. And why is it inspiring? They, they give you the time, and they give you their network. And that's a big deal in our business. Uh, government can't do it alone, we all, we all know that. So when, you, when you're lucky enough to have commissioners that really give you time and network, uh, you can do some great things. Um, and actually, I'm gonna give you an example of um, a project Dr. Traubert's been working on with us now for the past two years. So three weeks ago, we cut the ribbon on our 11th artificial multi-purpose field in the Oakland neighborhood. This is Mandrake Park. The Pritzker Traubert Family Foundation uh, started this initiative over two years ago, and I'm proud to say they've raised over $12 million. Now we have one more field to go. It's in the West Lawn neighborhood, sort of um, just south of Midway Airport. I had the pleasure of being with uh, Bears place kicker, Robbie Gold, uh, this past sa uh, Saturday, and his Golden Touch Foundation, and Robbie pledged $225,000 towards completing the field. So that field in West Lawn will be done this summer, and it will end uh, what has uh, been a wonderful run for the Take the Field. Okay, quick story. Two years ago, uh, almost to the day, I had the pleasure of being named by uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel and the Park District Board. Uh, General Superintendent of the Chicago Park District, June 8th, 2011. And the reason I will not forget that date is uh, my daughter, Mari, was born earlier that day. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're not gonna forget that day. Um, and, and, you know, it was, it was a funny day. <laughs> but, um, you know, Mari's grown, she's blossomed, and uh, really, She's done some amazing things, and I'm tracing both my daughter's life and, and my tenure at the Park District, 
and I'd like to think we're blossoming, we're doing amazing things, and uh, we're really something special. So that, that's my quick story about June 8th, two years ago, uh, my tenure, and the daughter of my fourth, uh, the birth of my fourth child, Mari. Um, okay, uh, I, was, I was walking around asking some of you questions, so I wanna go through this in a second. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of questions today, but I'll, of course I've got the answers. So uh, when you think of the Park District, when you think of the Park District, how many people think of Millennium Park? Now did you know, well nobody does, that's good, that's good. That's not ours, that's the city of Chicago's. But in Chicago, the parks, the neighborhood parks, that's our backyards. That's the backyards for so many people in the neighborhoods. So if you ask anybody in Chicago, what's their favorite park? What's their favorite feature? You're likely to get about 300 answers. Uh, let me give you a few that uh, I thought of off the top of my head and then I've got a few that uh, some of you were kind enough to share with me. Sunday softball in Washington Park, where the Sunday's best league has been running for nearly 20 years. Gymnastics at Harrison and their award-winning program. Uh, this is a great one. If you coach beat baseball for children or you work with um, kids with autism, we've got the Field of Dreams that was built uh, by the Chicago White Sox for us on the southwest side in Mount Greenwood Park. And if you like to work on your tan the old-fashioned way, I didn't write this line, if you like to work on your tan the old-fashioned way, like me, uh, your favorite park may actually be North Avenue Beach, Rainbow Beach, Oak Street Beach, or one of our 26 other beaches. So, as I said, when I walked in, and, and you talk to a lot of people before, if you get here early, um, I wrote down, I asked some people some simple questions, which is, uh, uh, what does park mean to you in one or two words? So if, you, if you'll indulge me for just a second, I want to read off some of the ones that I heard. Uh, Soldier Field, Chicago Bears. Well, okay, the Bears are our tenant, so if, um, in addition to the Bears, I want to mention the college hockey we had this year. We've got Jay-Z and Timberlake coming. We've got Taylor Swift, Bon Jovi, and Gold Cup Soccer. Um, another one, and I won't, there's only one name I'll give out on these, but uh, First Date was one. <laughs> Special Olympics and Special Olympians. Wells Park Little League. Nature, fun. Chairman Burnett, safety for kids. Quality of life, jobs, the Albany Park, the award-winning Albany Park Theater Project. Um, partnerships with our beloved White Sox. Sorry, Father, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> I don't know where that one came from. I did this because I just wanted to illustrate sort of the breadth of issues we face. Um, anybody who's worked with the Park District is familiar with the Park District. We have a very wide range of issues we deal with on a daily basis, and it's really special, and it really is it's what makes the job great, and it keeps things uh, uh, fun, as we said, right, fun? Um, in fact, no other city can boast the diversity of programming facilities that we offer. You may have recently seen the news coverage with Mayor Rahm Emanuel when we announced 300 playgrounds. 300 playgrounds will be renovated in the next five years. Those playgrounds are our communities, and the mayor and I share those priorities. Now, did you know, the Park District's got five major recreational investments this season. Rose Hill Cemetery, which is a preserve in the northwest side. We've got now what we're calling the Big Park in Little Village, the Bloomingdale Trail, Maggie Daly Park, and Northerly Island. Together, these five projects alone, uh, I think last year I described it as career I mean, these are career pro any one of them is a career project. These five projects alone, it's 125 acres. That is the equivalent of five Millennium Parks, five. And with this growth, we're bringing the same vitality to our neighborhoods that Millennium Park brought to downtown. Now, I will talk a little bit more in detail about these projects, uh, but first I wanna focus on kids and community, and they feed right into our strategic plan. I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Kids are our number one priority at the Chicago Park District. Uh, so really, today, I'm gonna to lay it out for you. We're gonna talk about kids, we're gonna talk about community, and we're gonna talk about capital. And we're gonna talk about it in the now. We're gonna talk about it how it relates to the summer. Um, a few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of spending my morning in Gompers Park with uh, Fox News, uh, Pat Elwood, he's a, he's a Brother Rice guy, and uh, Mr. Todd Spoleto. I'm, I'm the tall guy. Uh, Todd Spoleto 
is the president of North Face. He also happens to be a Chicagoan. And um, in between shots, we were, we were talking about camping. We were talking about how we're going to expand the camping programs in Chicago this summer. And in between shots, we started talking about uh, things like, OK, who's got the coolest job? Of course, I won that. And, um, and Todd looks up, and he says, you know, man, summer in Chicago is the best. And it was like that one pause, and we all looked at him, we said, yeah. And now this guy's moved, he lives in the Bay Area, and he goes, Chicago, summer in Chicago is the best. And we know it. And we want summer in Chicago to be the best for all of you, and we want summer in Chicago to be the best for our kids, right? And that's what it's about. Another did you know fact, did you know we teach more kids to swim than any other city agency in the country? As of today, we've got 10,000 kids registered to swim. And we have a saying, we will measure our success by the number of kids we bring in the door. I'm gonna give you some statistics. This past spring, and for the first time in park history, we registered 80,000 people in our programs. That's direct. We service probably each season indirectly another 80,000. This was our third straight season with over 70,000 registrations. So far this summer, we've registered nearly 20,000 kids in summer day camp, and we've registered another 17,000 in park activities. And that may not seem like a lot. That is trending probably 10% over anything we've ever done in the past. Um, and again, I want to just mention again, we serve probably indirectly this summer 80,000 kids. That's little leagues, that's yoga classes, and that's um, any other private interest. All said, we aren't just the, that, all said with that total, we aren't the largest learn to swim program. We're the largest summer day camp provider. And we are the largest uh, summer day camp provider in the country. And all the while we did this, we've held the line on taxes and we've held the line on fees. Nothing? With the taxes? Come on. If I can't count on applause on a tax, you know, I, I say it every year. We are the best deal in town. Uh, this summer, now I want to talk about something new we're doing with kids this summer. Uh, this summer, we're going to introduce the Summer of Learning program. It's been well documented that during summer vacation, kids can regress and they can lose up to two months of learning when they're not in school. But we can change that. Through our Summer of Learning, we've uh, taken advantage of our relaxed classroom, and that's the great outdoors. In addition to our traditional camp activities like swimming, in sports, we will learn through building, scavenger hunts, and 20 minutes of required reading. In return for their efforts, kids are going to earn badges. And with these badges, they're going to earn a sense of accomplishment. If you don't believe me, believe the Scouts, believe Disney. These are tried and true gaming principles that give a children an opportunity to learn and earn a reward. And hopefully we can stem that loss of growth that I mentioned before. So I want to move from kids to uh, Teens, some more fun facts. Did you know we are one of the largest employers of youth in the state with more than 3,000 teens employed in 2012 alone? And on Sunday, I had the pleasure, I was at Curie High School on Sunday, and I had the pleasure of congratulating our newest class of lifeguards. You know, lifeguards, in all seriousness, they're our first responders. And I had the pleasure of uh, meeting several of the 350 disciplined young men and women and as they stood proud and they graduated and they accept their assignments. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You walk into a gymnasium, there's almost a thousand people and they're very proud parents. And these young men and women, they, they accept an awesome responsibility. They've now guard, they've got to guard the pool, they've got to guard the lakefront. In a minute, I'm going to tell you that millions, millions of people are on our beaches and on our pools every year. It's, it's impressive. Um, in addition to our lifeguard program, we offer nearly 1,800 individual teen programs just from fall to the summer. And our newest program for teens is Windy City Hoops. This was a Mayor Emanuel challenge. Isaiah Thomas uh, partnered with the mayor, and we created a basketball league for teens on Friday and Saturday nights. Uh, we started out in 10 parks, and we chose parks that had high rates of violence, and we chose parks on Friday and hours when the violence occurs. And um, within probably the efforts of people like Tim O'Connell and his team, we had reached over 1,200 teams in a matter of weeks. We crowned 10 champions, 
this past uh, first week of June. Now we're into open gym again. And you walk into these uh, field houses and everybody likes to reminisce about the old days in the park district. And you know, I'm getting around enough now that I'm one of those old guys. But you know, you walk into a field house and these field houses are what they're supposed to be. It's kids, it's girlfriends, it's little brothers, it's mom, it's dad. They're all there on a Friday, Saturday night. And guess what? Nothing bad is happening. The community's taking back the park. They're giving the kids something positive to do. And I want to recognize this was paid for. It wasn't paid for with park district dollars. It was paid for with private donations. And I want to recognize specifically the Gardner family, Salmon's Financial, and the hundreds of folks. The mayor made one announcement. We set up what's called a crowd raising website and hundreds of people raised to it to make their own individual donations. And that, that program is paid for through the end of the year. I would also like to recognize uh, the Chicago Housing Authority. Based on the success of the program, CHA has stepped up. We're gonna start an 11th league uh, this, this uh, summer. It's gonna be a Carver Park, which is in Altgeld Gardens on the far south side of the city. So, I, before I turn to community, I do want to mention one, one other partnership, and it's going to be with the Chicago Public Schools. So we know, we know how difficult it was this year with the parents, with the teachers, and most importantly, right, with the children. And um, at the district, we often say, CPS kids, well, those are our kids. Um, and really, they're all our kids if you care at all about this city, right? So this summer, we... Um, we're gonna set out with a small gesture that will hopefully have big returns. School year is gonna get out and what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our park strategically located uh, into welcoming parks. And we're gonna invite the new principals and we're gonna invite the students from the consolidating schools together. They're gonna to do it in a relaxed setting, they're gonna do it in the park. And you know we believe it'll be good for these kids to lay eyes on one another um, and maybe get to interact and do some icebreaker uh, activities prior to laying eyes on one another the first day in that classroom. We think we're gonna get big returns with that small gesture. And really, that's a good segue into my, my next point. It's all about community in this town. So, we're talking community and we're talking summer. Can you think of a more popular destination in Chicago than your local Chicago park? A couple stats, we have nearly 600 parks in the city we have over 225 field houses, we have over 500 playgrounds, and we have 77 pools. Now you ready for this stat? We estimate that 25 million people use our parks a year. 25 million. No oohs, no uh, <laughs> Tough crowd today. When you talk about 25 million, you're talking about the museums, you're talking about the Lincoln Park Zoo, you're talking about the beaches. If you compare attendance, we top the Magic Kingdom, which is the number one attended amusement park in the country. All right. Thank you. Which, unfortunately, I think that's the second time I've now plugged Disney, so uh, if I do it a third time, ring a whistle, somebody tap a water glass and stop me. The point is we're bigger. Um, I think everybody knows Soldier Field is owned by the Chicago Park District and that we partner with Lollapalooza. But did you know we partner with Pitchfork Festival in Union Park or the Chosen Few House Music Festival in Jackson Park? How many people know Jimmy Buffett is coming to Northerly Island this summer? Or Fish? How many Fish people we have in the room today? <laughs> Not many, huh? <laughs> you know enough to laugh, so. As we've enjoyed our success as promoting our events in the downtown area, we realized we've got to bring this back to the, uh, to the neighborhoods. We've got to bring it back to the community. We've got to reinvent, rebrand, and re-inspire our communities. And we're going to do that around cultural events. And that is when Night Out in the Parks was born. I would like to give special thanks to a great friend of the Chicago Park District, Mr. Tony Weissman. Tony is now the CEO, recently the CEO of Digitas uh, Marketing North America, and he and his team not only created this logo for us uh, gratis, but they have repeatedly answered our calls for marketing help, and they do it again for the same reasons why you're all here. 
It's civic pride in this great city. So night out in the parks, really, it was an answer to the mayor's call of action. About a year ago, the mayor uh, and Michelle Boone, the commissioner of DCASE, uh, to call Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, they published a city plan, city cultural plan. And I'm proud to say we answered his call, and this is our action. We focused on the neighborhoods, and we almost, uh, we almost tripled the amount of cultural events we offer, mostly free, all over the city this summer. We're going to offer nearly 200 movies this year. Uh, last year, the Chicago Shakespeare Theater performed The Taming of the Shrew. This year, they're going to perform A Comedy of Errors. The Circus in the Parks performed thousands throughout the city last year. And if you haven't had a chance to see them, you need to go to our website, www.chicagoparkdistrict.com. You need to find the Midnight Circus near you. They're going, to, they're going to double their performances this year, as is Shakespeare. And they did it. They did it through the mayor's legacy fund. The mayor took $2 million out of his legacy fund, and he put it toward cultural affairs and special events and park districts to promote more cultural activity. And it's amazing when, when you start getting momentum. Red Moon's now involved. Yesterday, the Sun-Times featured uh, Collaboration, which is another theater, uh, award-winning theater troupe. They're on board. And I guarantee Night Out in the Parks in this city will become a household name, and hopefully this, will be, this program will be emulated throughout the country. Again, I can't say it enough. These events bolster communities in Chicago. We have our neighborhoods. We have our parks. We want positive activity in our parks. And when the positive activity is going on in the parks, guess what? The bad guys don't want to be around. I would like to take this opportunity to plug one of our first night out in the park events. So this Sunday, June 9th, Ping Tom Park. Ping Tom Park is at 18th and the River. Uh, we are going to celebrate the grand opening of our first completed boathouse. Now a year ago I was here, I was here last March, and I was showing a picture, and I don't know how good the lighting is, I was showing you a picture of a design of the building. That's the actual building. The building was built in a year. But rather than just cutting a ribbon on a boathouse, we're going to turn it into an all-day event. We're going to celebrate our second shoreline, which we call the river, and we are going to be joined by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra and led by the famed conductor, Ricardo Moody. This happens to be the finale for the CSO's Rivers Festival, and it promises to be truly what a celebration of rivers are, uh, a vital highway, of commerce, culture, and really a city's quality of life. Now quickly, my, my, my team wanted me to mention one other rich river project before I dove into capital. If you move north along the river, you will find your way to Clark Park. Now Clark Park, for the North Siders, Lane Tech grads, Clark Park sits just to the west of Lane Tech. That is a spectacular building. We plan on cutting the ribbon on that facility uh, in July and we've partnered with the Lincoln Park Junior Rowers Club to get thousands of kids in the city into rowing and really getting out of the neighborhood and trying something different. It's all about giving these kids uh, opportunities. The other project on the river I wanted to mention was with the U.S. Army Corps. Uh, the U.S. Army Corps is partnering with us on a $6.5 million River Edge restoration project at Horner Park. And now, speaking of habitat restoration, I want to turn to Northerly Island. And please don't raise your hand, but I'm going to ask the question, does anybody not know where Northerly Island is at this point? <laughs> so at Northerly Island, and that's a pretty spectacular picture, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is developing the island's southernmost 50 acres of wilderness, the southernmost, so roughly where the terminal building is. And they're going to create e interconnected ecosystems. Think wetlands, think prairies, think savannas, and think woodlands. They're going to build a four-acre pond out on the site. They're going to plant over 200 trees in the next five years. And if that was enough, this is the largest creation of natural habitat anywhere in, in the Great Lakes region. Now to the north of the island, this is part of the island's master plan and this is where we've expanded. We've worked with Live Nation and we've expanded the concert venue, the seating from 8,000 to roughly 8,600 
Uh, this is where Fish and Jimmy Buffett are going to be. This really could be Chicago's next Ravinia. Um, I, I think everybody would agree there's, there's not a backdrop like that, not only in, in, in Chicago, there's not a backdrop in the concert business like that anywhere else in the country. And yes, Buffett and Fish is going to be larger crowds for us, but all the money that is made on that northern end goes back to the southern end. That is the model for government. That is sustainability. That model, that model is what we use the dollars. All the dollars we use to match to develop that Southern Acres came from that music venue. Um, this is a picture again of me and Todd Spoleto and, and Pat Allwood sitting around the campfire. <laughs> Sorry. That picture actually, that's just once again to promote urban camping. We're, we're very much in the urban camping business. We've partnered with Arnold and the Cook County Forest Preserves. And we're bringing more permitted urban camping, not only to the island, but to a select amount of parks throughout Chicago. I will say the Northerly Island venue sold out the first day uh, online. And again, if you haven't been to the island, if you're a walker, you're a runner, you're a biker, you're a cross country skier, you got to get out there. You've got to get. You got to familiarize with yourself. It's wilderness in downtown, and, and words alone can't do it justice. I want to move now off the lakefront, and I want to go inland, and I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're now calling the big park in Little Village. So to orient you, this is roughly uh, just west of the Cook County Jail at 26th Street, and this is a 22-acre. Uh, US EPA Superfund site, and it's actually the largest Superfund uh, site being converted to a park in the country. Uh, we will be complete uh, next fall. This park will boast two lit artificial turf fields, three lit natural grass fields, a skate park, a large playground with a water feature, concessions, restrooms, trails, gardens, and parking. And again, this project starts this fall and will be done next fall from the neighborhood back to the lakefront. This is Maggie Daly Park. This is on the Grant Park North End, and this park is nothing short of spectacular. Now, did you know, the largest, Chicago is the home of the largest underground parking complex anywhere in the country. But what's probably uh, more significant, Maggie Daly Park is the second largest green roof in the country, only to be outdone by Millennium Park, which is the largest green roof of anywhere in the country. Now this shot here has you, if you're in Millennium Park, it's got you strolling down the Geary Bridge, you're facing east, and you're walking into the center of this one-of-a-kind 20-acre park. And I'm proud to say the park has been removed and the construction, the, the waterproofing, and the fixing of the membrane is well underway. The project is on time and it's on budget. Like Millennium, this park will be a world-class destination. Let me give you some features of it. It's got a quarter mile ice skating ribbon. It's got a competition level rock climbing sculpture and it's got a three acre, three acre play garden. In fact, these rock walls will make up the Chicago's first and only park climbing friendly venue where beginners and experts alike can go. It's the only one in the country or the only one in Chicago, I should say. It may be the only one in the country, but <laughs> why should I stop now? The, the ice ribbon is essentially a 400 meter track. So if everybody knows how big a track is, that's how big this ice rink. It's double the size of an ordinary rink while winding through evergreen trees and rolling landscape. And as a compliment, we'll have concessions, hot chocolate, skate rentals. And last, and if you have kids, if you're a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, this, this is world class. This is Millennium Park when you're in the park and recreation business. This is, this three acre playground is, is, we use Alice in Wonderland, we use Charlie and the Chocolate Factory to describe it. The play equipment, the plantings, these are things that uh, are normally not used in parks, not seen in parks. This was done specifically to stimulate the imagination and stimulate the senses of kids. And it also means jobs. All of this capital means jobs. Uh, I'm proud to say the skating will open uh, winter 2014, and the Empire Park uh, will be set to open spring of 2015. You're, you're getting the common denominator, Dr. Green? Could open in the winter. Yes, yeah, 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 right. Um, 
From the Lakefront Trail, I want to move you back to the Bloomingdale Trail. This is really a great story. We're talking about communities, we're talking about neighborhoods. Bucktown, Wicker Park, Humboldt Park, Logan Square. The Bloomingdale Trail is 10 years of meetings. It's 10 years of discussions. Well, I'm proud to say now the project's been bid, the project's on track, and there will be uh, CDOT will break ground this summer. This project creates 16 new acres of parkland while converting 2.65 miles of railroad in a beautiful and ready to ride trail. And again, it's roughly 1800 North Ashland is at, at, is at the east end and it runs for close to almost three miles um, dead to the west. And I'm proud to say this really is a true partnership with community. It's a true partnership with the philanthropic community and it's a true partnership with government. And for that, I wanna thank the folks, I don't know if anybody from CDOT's here, but I wanna thank the folks at CDOT. They've been incredibly diligent. Um, Jay recognized Beth White, but again, I wanna recognize Beth White and all the folks at TPL for their tremendous efforts in coordinating and fundraising for this project. And last, I wanna thank Mayor Emanuel. He really is the spearhead of this project. And this is a project he hit the ground running on from day one when he took office. Again, this project will break ground this summer and the trail will be ready to ride this fall, 2014. Thank you. So last project I wanna talk about, it's the most significant. I touched on it a little bit in my introduction. As I said, we have 500 playgrounds in Chicago. And playgrounds don't make a lot of money. They're not a big revenue generator, but they have a huge impact in communities. And no one else, no one else is taking on 300 playgrounds in this country. So I'm a father of four, connoisseur of playgrounds, and, um, <laughs> but we, really, we realized we needed to make a difference. And, and the challenge with playgrounds is there's just so many of them. And you can sit and you can do 10, you can do 15, you can do 20, infinitum. Or you can finally roll up your sleeves, partner with some folks, and uh, get all 300 done in the next five years. My team has promised me they're gonna get it done, right? Where's my team? Yep, promised me they're gonna get it done. And listen, I wanna close with this. The Park District's about kids. The Park District's about community. The Park District's about making capital investment in your kids and in your community. And I urge you, I really urge you, and if anybody, everybody in here who knows me, I mean, get out in your parks. Use them, embrace them. Get out in your parks and enjoy the summer. And with that, I say thank you. Are there, are there any questions from non-employees, please? <laughs> <laughs> or fam does family or fam come? Or that family over there. If you have a question, hand it up. Where's Sidney Clevey? Work, work the room, Sidney Clevey. And, and when the questions are asked, if you can, we did this last year and I thought it was fun. I'd love to know what's your favorite park and why, or just give me your favorite park. Or maybe it's not your favorite park and you're going to tell me in your question. All right, I got it. This is a, right off the bat, we get a tough question. Joe Lam Lam Lamke? Animate, animate architect, right off the bat. It can't be a simple one. Are there any plans to replace the plastic toilets on the lakefront with well-designed, self-cleaning washrooms? Hmm. Yeah, I, I, know, I know you covered it in your speech, but why don't you? <laughs> That's actually a trickier question than you would actually believe. Um, here's my answer. First, Joe, uh, where's Joe? Okay, if you, if, if you have the self-cleaning toilet, I would love to meet you afterwards and, and talk about it. Is that what, is that, am I missing the punchline? Um, the, the, the lakefront, it's wildly popular. We never, we never seem to uh, be able to open them quick enough. Lord knows then we open them uh, on a 60 degree day in February and then two days later it goes behind freezing and we're fixing the, the pipes that burst. Uh, the, the cleaning is a challenge, and uh, the bottom line is if you have a better mousetrap or anybody has a better mousetrap, we're all ears. I've been in facility management for a very long time, as is Pat LeVar, my COO, and uh, I, I'll, I'll take a look at anything if it's going to make, uh, make a better experience for our users of the lakefront. So thanks. 
Uh, somebody has a typed question. <laughs> I gave you credit. You're, you're, you're bringing out unique questions here. Uh, this is a real long one. Don Davis, where are you? Right here. You, where's your machine that you typed this? Oh, you had this coming? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Remember, his family's right behind you. I got a lot of people here. Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would like your feedback on, or some thoughts on how the Park District defines its mission in relation to recreation and fitness. Well, you answer that. Currently, the district's mission is in terms of directly providing. What's your question in 20 words or less? Right now, you're focused on directly providing services rather than a bigger theme of like fitness where there's like no links on your website to Michelle Obama's Let's Get Active, I think is the name of it, or likewise, um, Oklahoma City did a like fitness campaign to get everybody fit right. in a little broader picture rather than just parks. Think about that. Well, first of all, you're right about one thing. Um, the Let's Move, the Great Outdoors, the, the, the interior, the, the Washington's come up with a lot of initiatives of getting people moving. And it's, it's, it's one of those 300, 400, 500 special interests we have. Getting people moving is a big one. Um, one of the simplest things we've done is installing uh, fitness equipment back in the parks. Uh, we're, we're toying with, I'm a, I've been a CrossFitter for a long time, a lot of people on my staff are. We've been toying with uh, getting more in the CrossFit. I would actually like to talk to you afterwards and introduce, do you know Colleen Lamel? No, I, need to, I, I need to introduce you to someone who, and I'm not making this up, Colleen is our fitness expert. Colleen actually has done backflips into the conference room <laughs> when we need someone to make a dramatic entry and show we're all about fit fitness. So if you don't mind, can I grab you afterwards? Sure. Thanks. Well, by the way, we do have a, a, a John Gates from the RTA right over there. He came in a tad late <laughs> and took my seat. And other than that, welcome, John. <laughs> well. Kathleen Jacob from the Adler Planetarium, where are you? Kathleen, don't be afraid. In the back there, sort of like in the Pluto area, okay. Woo. <laughs> Boy, this crowd's it. This isn't a park district crowd altogether. They would have picked it up like that. Uh, I could have said something else, but there's a lot of people here, so I'm not gonna go. Uh, Kathleen, if you, oh, maybe you could read this because it's light pencil in dark light. Can you read that? I think the Park District is doing a great job. <laughs> it's really good to have a Park District superintendent named Kelly, isn't it? All right. What, in 20 words or less, what's your question? I'll tell you the biggest one. The big, it's a great question. Uh, the biggest, I'm going to tell you the biggest impact is going to be uh, the CDOT flyover. Uh, it's roughly from uh, Ohio, and, and everybody knows that uh, there's a, a lot of pinch points. If, you, if anybody, everybody's gone to Navy Pier, and when you're going under the drive, you've got, uh, you've got bikers, you've got walkers, you've got uh, pedestrians, you've got a, a, a load of tourists that don't know where they're going, and then you've got cars that are confused and, and, and it all converges really on what, Grand and Illinois there. And CDOT is gonna remedy all that. Uh, we're a small part of it because we own DeSable Park, which sits at the base. I would say right now that is the single biggest impact on uh, bike and uh, pedestrian safety along the lakefront. Next question, you do have dark ink and print. Okay, Jim Aldworthy, Chicago Fire Department. Where are you, Jim? Right. See, all the people who ask questions are in the back. You guys up here are just, well, not quite. <laughs> what is the status of the last four miles pro project, North Avenue Beach? Does everybody know what the last four miles is? So the last four miles is the extension from really Hollywood to Devon to take the Lakefront Trail and go all the way up. What's the status? It's, it needs money and it needs public support and it needs a lot of both. Uh, it's a very expensive project, and there is a lot of homeowners and condo owners on Sheridan Road who really right now aren't interested in a lakefront trail going behind their house. That's the most honest and direct answer I can give you. Okay, this is a mysterious question. Uh, you make this a one word answer, please. Can you tell us if you will continue supporting the Special Olympics? Absolutely. <laughs> Sign your name next time, Skinny.
Oh, I'll do two more questions. One's the shameless plug from Charlie Mangini, our trumpeter from the Vandercook School, free summer band concert, Women's Park, 18th in Indiana, 7 p.m. Tuesday, July 16th. No, but yeah, but can I, can I? No, but, this, but this is night on the parks. This is exactly what we want. I want the churches, you know, a lot's been groused about over the years about that the parks is charging fees for the first time and, and it's unaffordable, but this is exactly what we want. I want, where's Charlie? There you go, yeah. I'm all in, I'll, I'll, we'll put this on the website. I want the groups, I want the communities to take the parks, I want them in there, we all want them in there. This is perfect, thank you. And I, honestly, I, we, just, we just met five seconds ago. Let's, you know. Okay, this is the, uh, the, the last question. And by the way, I hope you all caught the logo of the park, 1934. That was called a reform. We used to have three park districts. Can you imagine two more guys like Kelly? <laughs> just think of that. Okay, Dan, why don't you help me with your last name here, Dan? Kostolinsky? Am I close? How, how many names could be like this? <laughs> Neighbor, volunteer, and LSP committee. LSP, you know what that is. Yeah. Is there any plan in progress for Lakeshore Park upgrade or resurfacing, repurposing? Or I think that's the word, repurposing. Neighbor, volunteer, Penmanship is beginning to slip. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to find out though, and I'm going to grab you before we leave. I want, I, we, I want to give you an honest answer, and not a, uh, not of a sort of wishy-washy. Oh, we'll look into it. No, I'll, I'll, afterwards I'll grab you, and we'll talk about Lakeshore Park. How about a great round of applause?